if you were to shine a light down on over the top of vector u in this diagram, it would cast a shadow onto the x-axis where vector v happens to be sitting. And that shadow would look something like this. OK, let's take another copy of that shadow vector and move it over here so we can talk about it. We call this the vector projection. of u onto v. And we'll use the notation PROJ, which is short for projection. The u next to it is kind of like the argument. And a subscript down here that shows that that's the vector we're projecting onto. We can find this vector by doing the following computation. u dotted with v divided by the magnitude of v. We're going to multiply that by the unit vector v divided by its magnitude. If I simplify that, and this is actually it's much more common that you'll see this written this way. Uh, if I simplify this a little bit, you get u dotted with v divided by the magnitude of v squared times the vector v. OK, so what's really going on here? Well, what we're trying to do is figure out how far in the direction of v does u go? So the first thing I want to sort of observe is that if all I care about is the direction of v and not its magnitude, then one of the things I'd like to do is figure out what would vector v look like if it had a magnitude of 1. So I'm using this unit vector v divided by its magnitude to indicate direction, the direction of vector v, without multiplying it by any scale, without scaling it in any way. It means I don't care how long v is. All I care about is its direction. The rest of it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but I'll see if I can do something to try to make it a little bit clearer. This part right here looks an awful lot like that particular version of the dot product formula, I'll write it down over here. We said that u dotted with v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. But that was equal to the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Well, the difference between uh, my this piece of my projection formula and this uh, way of writing the cosine of theta. What's different is this magnitude of u here. So basically what we're saying here is we want to know what effect the size of this angle has on the relationship between u and v if we don't divide away the length of u. In other words, I'm I'm actually interested in what effect the length of u has on this projection. That's the piece I want. So I don't want to divide it away. If u were a different vector, if it were way up here, for example, then I would have a different angle. And so the cosine theta piece is still computed the same way. But my, my let me just go ahead and draw one in here. If I had an, a different vector, but I still ended up in the same place when I drop a vertical line down here, then what I'm getting is a, a bigger angle, but I still have the same, in this particular case, I still have the same vector projection here. So what I want is the size of the, the effect of the size of the angle, if sort of, has on this projection. So I don't want to divide away the length of u because that plays a very important role. The, the 
for the same projection, the bigger the angle, the bigger U has to be. So this piece right here is a scaling of vector U, of, of the cross product of vectors U and V, which has to do with the size, size of the, the angle between the two vectors, divided by the vector, the magnitude of the vector V, but not by the vector U. So this is my cosine of theta without the U's, the, without the length of U divided away. And then I've multiplied that by the unit vector for V to give me the direction of B, V, but not its magnitude. So I'm going to erase this part again now. This is what we call the vector projection of U onto V, and this formula, I'm not a keen fan of formulas, but this is a particularly difficult one to really wrap your head around um, where it comes from. And so the best thing to do, I think, with this one is just to sort of make a note of this formula, write it down, memorize it, whatever it is you need to do. Essentially, what we're doing with this with this formula is we're finding the the vector that we get when we cast a shadow of one vector onto another. It's worth noting, and I'll just do a, a quick sketch down here, that the vector v does not have to be on the x-axis. The vector v, for example, might be down here. And the vector u might be Oh gosh, it might be, it could be anywhere. Let's say it's right here. And then projection is just going to be like this. This white arrow is the vector projection of U onto V, assuming that U is the blue arrow and V is the pink arrow. It's also worth noting, I'll use a different color for this one, that I can project vector V onto U as well. So for example, I can write the projection of V onto U, and that looks like this. That's gonna be this yellow arrow. So I've taken V, I've shined a light down uh, onto V, or through V or over V onto U, and that's given me the projection of V onto U. Now, if we just look at this part, u dotted with v divided by the magnitude of v, this is the thing that scales the unit vector associated with v so that we're looking at how much, uh, how much effect u has on v in the direction of v. And we're calling this a scalar, uh, it is a scalar, and it actually has its own merits in a lot of environments. So I'm going to give it its own name. It's, I'll, I'll label it first. This is the scalar projection of U onto V. And its notation is C-O-M-P, let me try that again, need a little more room. C-O-M-P of U onto V. C-O-M-P stands for component, and that's a little bit misleading because vectors have components, but that's not really what we're talking about here. What we're talking about in this case is the component of We'll go back up to this formula. The component of this formula that indicates scale, not direction. So this is the scalar component, if you will, and this is the directional component. We're interested down here on just the scalar component. Sometimes it is called the component of V, sorry, of U onto V. Sometimes it is called a scalar projection of U onto V. Your textbook calls it the scalar projection. Um, and it is just a scalar. It's the scalar that tells us how long the component, the, the length of the component of U in the direction of V. So in this direction, how far along can I go and still be under the influence of U? 
That's really what that means. So in this projection, the projection of u onto v is this vector. Uh, another way to write the, comp the scalar projection of u onto v is this. Take the projection of u onto v and take its magnitude. That means we're looking at u dotted with v divided by the magnitude of v squared, that's a scalar, times the vector v, this piece is a scalar, scaling a vector gives us a new vector, what I'm interested in is the magnitude of that vector. Now you never really see it written this way. My point in, in writing it out this way is to remind you that what this comp u of v, this scalar projection or this component of u onto v, what that is, is just the magnitude of this other thing that we came up with, okay? This is a unit vector. So a unit vector scaled by this much is going to have this magnitude and where is it <laughs> there it is there is the magnitude of a scalar uh, scalar times a unit vector a unit vector has a magnitude of one this is the thing that scales it so the scalar projection times the unit vector gives us the vector projection okay let's take a look at an example i've got two vectors here a and b and I'd like to find the projection of A onto B and also the projection of B onto A. By way of reminder, the projection of u onto v is u dotted with v over the magnitude of v squared, the magnitude of v squared, that, that scalar times the vector v. So as we do these two problems, we need to be cognizant of the positioning of our, our vectors in the formula and our vectors in the question. So this is the projection of A onto B. Wherever I see a U here, I'll replace it with an A. Wherever I see a B, I'll replace it with a V. But here, those take the opposite roles. We're gonna need the dot product regardless. So let's find the dot product of A with B a dotted with b and because the dot product is commutative i'll be able to use this result in both of the both of these questions here so a dotted with b is negative four times two plus three times zero plus one times negative five so i get negative 13 for the dot product of a and b the projection of a onto b is going to be a dotted with b over the magnitude of b squared times the vector b whereas the dot sorry the projection of b onto a is going to be a dotted with b over the magnitude of a squared times the vector a so each of these is going to have a negative 13 in the numerator. And I need to figure out what the denominator is. And then the vector b here is 2, 0, negative 5. And the vector a <clears throat> is negative 4, 3, 1. So now all I have to do is figure out what the magnitude of b is. And I'll put that here, square it magnitude of a, square it, and put that here. I'll do the magnitude of b first, since that's the, the first one I've been asked to find. 
the magnitude of B is the square root of 2 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 5 squared, which is the square root of 4 plus 25, which is the square root of 29. So that's what's going to go here. But that's just the magnitude. I need to square that. And then I'll do magnitude of A is the square root of negative 4 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared. That is 16 plus 9 is 25, so 26. So that is what goes here. OK, and I need to square that as well. Now, normally we just do one of these at a time. I'm just doing them both because I want to show you, first of all, that the results are different. But also it kind of provides us an opportunity to see each step kind of twice as we go through the process. Remember that the top of both of these rational expressions is the dot product of the two vectors involved. But in the, in the problem where we're looking for the projection of A onto B, we use B everywhere else. In the problem where we're looking for the projection of B onto A, we use A everywhere else. So continuing, I get negative 13, the square root of a square, or the square of a square root is just the argument. And here I'm going to get, see 26, the square root of 26 squared is just 26, and 13 over 26 is a half, so I'll get that. And for my, so I could leave them at this point. I could leave these in this, uh, in this form. Uh, or I could multiply through. I could scale the vector. I could use that scalar to scale the vector. So here I'm going to get negative 26, 20 ninths, 0. And negative, let's say that's 50, 65, negative 65, 20 ninths. So that is the projection of A onto B. The projection of B onto A is 2, negative 3 halves, negative 1 half. Now what we found in both of these cases is a vector. This is a vector. And that vector, is in, it's in uh, R3, but for the sake of argument, essentially what I have found is the projection of one vector onto another, which has given me this vector, the white vector. And that vector is what I have found here. This is just a generic example. I have no idea which, which vectors these are. But what I found is the vector. This is the vector. That's the projection of A onto B. Or this one, the projection of, sorry, this is the projection of B onto A. This one's the projection of A onto B. Um, what I have, I have used in the process of finding that, if I take out one copy of this magnitude here, this U dot V over the magnitude of V, that is the component of u onto v, or the scalar projection of u onto v. And I needed that value in order to do this work. But usually it's the projection, the vector, the result, the resulting vector that you want. So that is how you find scalar and vector projections. And this has been an example of actually finding a vector projection in R3.